Greetings everyone and welcome to another WIS technology tutorial. In today's lesson I'm going to be talking about moving data from an SIS, in our case Blackboard, to a Google Calendar. Um, I was inspired to try something this uh, because of my recent experience using Roster Sync to provision Google Classrooms and I got to thinking what else could I take from our SIS that could be useful for teachers. So I decided to build a system where I can create an ICS file uh, per teacher per class. Um, now you might think well this should just be done by your SIS and import it into Google Calendar, um, which normally that would be possible, but I think in our case we have this quirky eight-day schedule uh, with differing uh, daily schedules for middle school and upper school and um, it's there's just a, a variety of elements that need to be considered in order for it to work properly so I thought well let me try my hand at it with Google Spreadsheets um, so I'm just gonna walk you through this I'm gonna outline this a little bit in more detail in my blog in the near future but basically what happens is as you see here in blue from column A to F. This is nothing more than a straight up uh, class meeting query in Blackboard. So this is pulling every single time that class meets um, for the first time. So basically that's why you see six art one, you see five entries for this section of art. Uh, that's because it meets five times per cycle. The top here we have our advisory they meet one day per cycle, which happens to be the E-Day. So all of this is coming uh, straight from Blackboard. That's what I was starting with. And that went down to approximately, let's see here, okay, 638 rows of data. And again, this is just the middle school. So my next task was to start building the information I knew I had, kind of the constants, uh, like the daily schedule and the letter days. So in another sheet, I basically created two columns, uh, one for each letter day and the other for the corresponding actual date. So um, this didn't take too long uh, because we have a, a tool that helps us repeat these events quickly. So I was able to, to quickly build this sheet, and then this was the middle school daily schedule. So I had to make it clear that um, on A days, for example, that period one begins at 8.15 and ends at 9.10, but see on a B day, period one actually starts at 8.15 and ends at 9.20. So it's kind of these things that had to be established um, in order for me to proceed with building the rest of the the ICS file. So after having the letter days and the daily schedule, I needed to put all of the letter day dates into one single cell. Okay, so I did that on this page. So what you're looking at here is column A through H. So this is basically, uh, these are all of the A days throughout the entire school year. As you can see, I just ran a simple query. So I'm querying my letter day sheet uh, and I'm selecting B where A equals A. So if we look over here, I'm choosing column B where A equals A. So every time there's an A here, it's gonna grab that date. So grab that one and this one and this one. That's just a simple um, query uh, with sort of this filter applied to it. So now once I successfully grabbed columns per uh, letter day, the next task was to actually join them into one cell. And I did that just right below. So here we have the letter A. And then what I did was here, I just simply did a join function um, which is looking through A1 to A22, which is right here. And it's basically gonna create a comma-separated value situation. So it's gonna list horizontally in one cell 
all of the A days. Okay, and that was crucial for later on in this process. I also decided to collect all of the teacher names and emails. Um, I don't really need the emails right now, so I haven't really done anything with them, but I think if I continue to develop this, they may or may not come in handy. So, um, but the one thing I did do with teacher names is I just created a sorted list and gave, um, so if I click up here, you can see here I'm sorting column A, and it's just putting them all in alphabetical order um, because you'll see a little bit later why that comes in handy. Then on this tab, um, this is where I work with all of these elements uh, together. But before I grab that, I want to show you how I got the daily schedule to interact with my data. So remember this page, this tab right here. I've, I've kind of successfully connected A day period one to these times. Now, what you have to do is do a look up against multiple criteria, right? You have to look up to make sure you're looking at an A day and a period one. And you wanna pull these, uh, this information, the start time and the end time. And the only way that I could think of you can do this was doing a VLOOKUP uh, through an array. So there's a really long formula um, and I can bring that up to you here on this page, where if I click up here, you're gonna see that this is an array formula with a VLOOKUP built inside. So what it's doing is it's testing, um, it's testing both of those criteria before returning my 10.30 a.m. time here. So I can see here's an E-Day period three. It's testing those conditions against the uh, daily schedule. So if I go down to E-Day period three, I know that it's 10.30 to 11.25. And the nice thing is, is when you do it as an array, um, it basically does it all the way down. There's no dragging of this column down. It's just gonna automatically populate all of the rest of the, the times. So that's how I was able to get the start time and end time for all of the classes. So how does this all come together? I have this teacher query tab. <clears throat> so if I select a teacher, I choose them from a drop down menu, I pick them by a name. Um, so say for example, <clears throat> I guess I could use this one, but I'll go to a teacher who I know who has a lot of courses. Um, here's Abby. So the minute I click on Abby, notice how in columns B through H, right? This is every first meeting uh, per class, essentially, per cycle. Not every first meeting, but it's every time she meets with that class in the first cycle. Now that's further expanded um, from J to O because what I've done here is sort of an advanced split. Um, so if you look here, this is not a built-in function of uh, Google Apps. It's something that had to be uh, added. So what I did was I went to Tools, Script Editor, and uh, got some help from some fine folks on Google Plus to sort of figure out how to modify this piece of code um, for, for my purposes. And what this does is it copies down, it sort of splits and transposes column H and copies everything else down. So as you can see, um, all the class meeting dates, the 9, 4, 20, 15, all this stuff is now going vertically. And the other, the other columns are also copying down. So here I have a nice long look of the entire year. You can kind of see where I'm going with this now. So all of these rows are what I'm gonna be needing to create this uh, ICS file um, that can be imported into uh, Google Calendar. So simply by choosing the teacher's name, it brings back the data regarding their courses, 
And then the last step is to, since I can't download an ICS file directly, um, for some reason the, the CSV upload doesn't seem to be working for me. So what I've done is I've, I've created just the columns that I needed for the CSV file. And what I would do now is simply file download as a CSV. And then I found this website uh, that actually converts CSV files to iCal, to ICS files. So then all I did was I went to choose my file in my downloads folder. So here's the one that I just downloaded. Um, I would probably rename this one first. Let's go do that. Just so I don't get confused on who it is. So if this is Abby. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose that file in my downloads. I'm going to open it. It's uploaded. Now I'm just going to convert it. So now I have the Abbey ICS file in my downloads folder. So now if I navigate over to my calendar, um, I've created a new calendar and I've just simply called it my schedule. So all I want to do is go to uh, the settings and scroll you know, a little bit down and I see the option to import a calendar. So I'm going to import, I'm going to choose my ICS file, click open, and then I'm going to pick the calendar I want to put it on. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on my schedule. And then if I click import, We can wait for a minute as it's doing the uploading of all of those classes. That would have been extremely complicated to put in manually and time consuming, um, but I'm hoping using this method um, will ease that process a bit and foster uh, more communication throughout the school and the ability to find uh, common meeting time. So as you can see, it processed 568 events, which is a, quite a number of events. And if we go back over to that calendar, um, look at how nice this is. So every, every single class period is listed um, in the calendar. So like I said, I will be outlining this in much more detail in a blog post, but um, if anyone who is a much more experienced uh, programmer could somehow automate this process in some way, um, I think that would be a really cool way of integrating your student information system with Google Apps. Anyway, thanks for watching and um, stay tuned for that blog post. Bye.